Let's take a moment and talk a little bit about the bending process on the harmonica, because some of you, I mean, the whole study is really about this. In the way that I would describe it to students uh, before our study is that I would say that we're trying to tune our mouth to the pitch of the bend we're trying to create on the harmonica. And let me talk a little bit about the size of the mouth, and then we need to talk a little bit more on the scientific side to say what we can actually, what we know definitively, and what's more descriptive, I guess, in helping my students to create the bending process. So let's start with what I would normally state to a student, then we can talk about if this is all fact or not. On a C harmonica, for example, uh, the blow reed, if I play three hole, I blow, we have a reed that is set here and it blows away from me. And that's a G on a C harmonica. The draw reed, which is on the bottom plate, is facing towards me. And when I inhale, it creates a pitch. In this case, it's the note B. So B on the draw and then G on the blow. When we bend on the harmonica, we create a constricted air passage by raising a portion of the tongue. From that constricted air passage forward to the harmonica creates this chamber. So we'd call it that the volume of the mouth at that point. Would that be a good way to call that? All right, so it's actually the size or the space in the mouth. If you were to take some silly putty and put it in there and spit it out, there would be a certain size in front of where the tongue is humped up to the front of the harmonica or the face of the harmonica. What we are doing in the bending process is we are creating this variable constriction when we do a high bend, a higher pitched bend on the harmonica, we are using more of the front of the tongue humped up more in the front of the mouth. A medium range bend is more of the middle of the tongue humped up towards the roof of the mouth. And a deep bend, low reeds on the harmonica, more to the left end of the harmonica where the pitches are lower, we're using more of the back of the tongue. For example, six draw is very frontal. A four draw is more in the middle of the mouth with more of the middle of the tongue humped up. A one draw is a lot further back with more of the back of the tongue humped up. So for example, on the three draw, what we first do is bring the, three, bring the tongue up to a point where it's basically tuned to the pitch of the three draw, or the anterior chamber is at such a size that it doesn't affect the vibration of the three draw reed. Then, as my tongue humps up more in the back and the constriction spot is a little bit further back, this anterior chamber is larger and we found that it is correlated towards the size of the anterior chamber and the degree of the bend that we get on the reed. So as I hump up my tongue more in the back, it is creating a dynamic change in the size of the mouth from the constriction point forward to the face of the harmonica. And what that does is it gives us a pitch change. The reed actually slows its vibration down to a point. And because the draw reed and blow reed are in the same slot, and the blow reed is lower in pitch than the draw reed, at about halfway, it actually starts to transfer its vibration to the blow reed, even though we're continuing to draw. And it's actually the blow reed that dictates how far we can bend. It ends up being around a half step above the blow reed's pitch. And we can put it on tuners and actually go pretty darn close to the blow reed's pitch, but you actually have to blow to achieve the actual pitch that the blow reed is tuned to. So if I have three draw B, and then it lowers, 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 as I'm humping more of the back of the tongue, dynamically enlarging the, uh, the anterior chamber of the mouth until we actually get into the deepest part of the bend and it's all blow reed that's doing, or primarily the blow reed that's doing the vibrating. So it's that change from the draw reed to the blow reed and the how far you can bend again being dictated by the blow reed's pitch. If I were to take say a four draw, which is D on the harmonica and four blow C, if I play a four draw and I hump up my tongue too far forward in the mouth, higher in pitch or what Again, we're going to talk a little bit about what, what, what that means in my mouth. But in other words, uh, too small to activate any type of bending process on the four draw. All we get is thin tone because the resonating chamber of the harmonica, being our oral tract, is very small, so it's going to have a very thin tone, non bassy in other words. I get no change, no change, no change. And once I get that sweet spot, it'll start to bend, 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 bend. And if I go beyond that sweet spot, beyond that reed and the blow reed's ability to bend, it'll go back up to its normal vibrating pitch and it'll go back to drawing on the harmonica or back to the vibration of the draw reed. So it's that sweet spot range. For example, I'll start too far forward, you'll hear nothing, nothing, then it'll start to bend. And as I keep on going too far, you'll actually hear it go back to its normal pitch. So I was actually continuing on what would be like a one draw bend, for example, but it wasn't affecting that draw read. 
So how's that explanation? Do you think that uh, our layman, uh, layman uh, viewer would, would get something from that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a harmonica player and someone who is, uh, now your bends are getting pretty good, but uh, early on when you were starting the bending process, do you think that description would, uh, would be helpful? Oh, I think it would help, yeah. Because they would. Good. And what That's do you think about good. the actual, I, mean, I use the, the term, I'm tuning <clears throat> my mouth to the pitch of the reed, mm -hmm. or I'm tuning my mouth to the actual pitch I'm trying to achieve. What? I think, well, tuning is probably a little vague. So yeah, in more of a non-professional acoustic physicist sort of way, tuning, you are. You're adjusting it to where it works. Uh -huh. As I've talked about this with different Tom and different of his friends, they're unsure what's going on. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Joe Wolf from Australia drew out a, a little formula when he saw these first and said rough approximation, but he, he included the size of the pharynx and the size of the constriction, the length of the constriction, uh -huh. as well as that anterior chamber in mm -hmm. the formula. So they're all variables that have some degree of significance. Uh -huh. My in instinct is that the main significance is right in that front cavity. Yes. So it's, it's difficult to say that's exactly what's going on. What would be nice for me is to say, one of my descriptions is when you're doing a three-draw holster bend on a C harmonica, you get the pitch A. And if you were to take molten metal and pour it in your mouth, oh, you know, it would stop at the constriction point and you were to spit it out into the form of an xylophone bar that bing, it'd be the same pitch. The don't physics don't work right that there. way. Yeah. But the, I, the, the idea yeah, that we're yeah. trying to tune our chamber uh, like you would have a wood block, the different sizes would give you lower pitch for a larger sized bar, for example. Probably more of a, a good uh, analogous description to help someone in the bending process, but we're still trying to, think, trying to learn what's, what actually is acoustically going on in the mouth because there's a whole science about formants and things that go on even for vocalists that... Uh, there's a big literature using MRIs, among other imaging techniques, for singers, singers in speech has to do with learning to sing, opera singers, and uh, we're dealing with speech defects. And so there's, it's a complicated system. So we can definitively say though that it is the size of the anterior chamber from where the constriction point is, is analogous to the depth of the bend. Larger chamber, tongue further back, will achieve a deeper bend on the mm -hmm. instrument. Would you be comfortable saying that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just trying to find out more about the process and to, to be able to describe it. And of course, the reason why we're here is to help you, the harmonica player, to, uh, to get a better understanding of what you can't see.